The college hoops chaos continues as we get closer to Selection Sunday on March 12th. There's a new number one in the AP poll for the seventh time this season, so let's take a look here. The top spot now belongs to Houston with Bama, Kansas, and UCLA rounding out the top four. Purdue drops two spots to number five. Baylor stays at number nine despite the loss to Kansas, and Tennessee falls a spot to number 11. Other big movers, Indiana down three spots to 17, Providence up four spots into the top 20, Iowa State drops to 23, and Texas A&M joining the poll at number 25. Let's bring in Isaac Trotter now to discuss the biggest headlines. And Isaac, Kentucky hasn't had too many of those positive headlines this season, but here's one. The Cats sweep Tennessee for the first time since 2012. And this is how quickly things can change in this sport. A week ago, the Cats had just one quad one win. Now they have four. So how do you feel about Big Blue Nation making the tournament? I feel like they're in. This is a game that Tennessee like didn't really need to have. Kentucky absolutely needed to have it, and they got it done. Two wins against Tennessee. It's really hard to keep them out of the tournament with a, with a win like that. I also think the win earlier this week over Mississippi State on the road might be even more impressive considering everything that was at stake. Mississippi State was rolling. Uh, Kentucky's been bad on the road. They went in and got the job done. So this is a Kentucky team that I think they're going to make the NCAA tournament. And if they do as a 10 or an 11 seed, they remind me a lot of Michigan last year who snuck in the tournament as, as an 11 and then made the Sweet 16. Guys, like you look back in history, like 11 seeds aren't supposed to have this much talent on their roster. Kentucky, at their peak, when they're healthy, they have as much talent as anybody else. We haven't seen it gel this year. We really haven't seen them get their full rotation back. So get C.J. Frederick healthy, get Severe Wheeler healthy, get Antonio Reeves and Frederick on the floor together, and, and you make the tournament now, and, and you're probably a three seed going, wait, we have to play Kentucky in the second round? Oh, you're a six seed. You've had an awesome year. Wait, we have to play Oscar Shibwe in the second round? Like, that that's brutal. Uh, and I, I think Kentucky deserves a lot of credit for getting the job done this week. Now, they just have to tread water the rest of the way, and I think I think they can kind of get their ticket to the big dance. Well, Kansas storms back from a 15-point deficit to beat Baylor over the weekend. The Jayhawks now 13-5 and in Quad 1 games. That's four more than any other team in the country. They have four more Big 12 games left on the schedule. So, Isaac, if they win out, what do you think are the chances we're talking about Kansas as the number one overall seed in a few weeks? I think it is absolutely in play. This is a Kansas team that they were down by 13 to Baylor. They didn't really look that great defensively. And Bill Self made a great switch at halftime and started to put Dewan Harris and Kevin McCullough on Baylor's best two guards, Adam Flagler and LJ Cryer, and, and Kansas's defense responded, and they're just so good in, in, in at home this season. And Kansas is just elite. And I think really seeing Saturday is like one of those moments where you go, you kind of get reminded of how good Bill Self is at this job and why it's really hard to give up on Kansas because they have the best coach in college basketball. He makes adjustments in the middle of the games at halftime and, and late in games. And you just see this Kansas team just put runs on other teams that we just don't see it. Like these peaks that Kansas has are so scary. So I absolutely do think they could be in the conversation for the number one overall seed. And we're talking about a team that could have 15, 16, 17 quad one wins when this is all said and done. That speaks to the depth of the Big 12. It also speaks to how dominant Kansas has been and how they're really starting to find their stride. I don't think this team is as talented as the one last year that won the national title, but they're more connected defensively. And I think they can do more on the defensive end this season. And when Dewan Harris scores, I think the stat of the year so far this year is when he has more than four points in a game, Kansas is undefeated. That, that's pretty telling right there. When he, when he gets it going offensively, this is a Kansas team that can beat anybody. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind as Kansas goes on the road tonight at a ranked TCU team, uh, the Jayhawks a one or two point underdog, depending where you look. Purdue regaining momentum after two straight losses, beating Ohio State by almost 30 points on Sunday. Now a lot of the attention for this team is on Zach Eady and Braden Smith, understandably. But Isaac, you think the defense deserves more credit. Why is that? Yeah, this is a Purdue defense last year that was one of the worst in the country in guarding ball screens, even though they had an older team. So Purdue got younger this year and got way better at guarding ball screens. Like that just doesn't really go together. You have to give Matt Painter and his crew a lot of credit. You know, Zach Eady's been dominant this year, probably the National Player of the Year front runner. Everybody's kind of penciled that in that he's that guy. But I look at all of these other pieces of guys who have just gotten better. Ethan Morton is a key role player who just defends every single time. He's getting better every single year. 
Braden Smith gives up some size to opposing guards. He's a gritty bulldog. He gets through and fights over every single screen. Uh, Brandon Newman is a guy that was supposed to have a, a big role this year, and it really hasn't happened offensively. But every single time he comes in the game off the bench, he gives Purdue a big spark defensively. So these role players are the ones stepping up and, and making this Purdue defense really good. And I don't think a lot of people know that they're second in the Big Ten during conference play in defense be behind Rutgers. Like So number one in offense, number two in defense in Big Ten play. That's kind of why they're going to win the Big Ten title. So don't sleep on this Purdue defense. That's a reason why I, I still think that this Purdue team, with the right draw, can make the Final Four. Okay, just a handful of regular season games left. Then we got the conference tournament. So we are on bubble watch. So let's talk about a couple teams on the edge of the bracket here. After a meltdown to NC State, North Carolina 0-9 in quad one games. The Tar Heels 11 losses are the most by a preseason number one team since the poll began. So Isaac, what does UNC need to do to make the tournament? Win out. You got to win at this point. Like this is a North Carolina team that's old. We've seen them flip the switch last year and get right. Can they do it two years in a row? Their backs are against the wall. They have got to win every single game right now. They have Virginia coming up. They have Duke at home. Got to win those two games. Road games at Notre Dame, who's been frisky as of late, and Florida State, you cannot afford to lose those games. And you look in the ACC tournament, you probably have to win at least a couple games in there, too, for North Carolina to, to feel a little bit better on Selection Sunday. This is an old North Carolina team that doesn't play like it right now. Late in the game against NC State, they just let NC State get on a run and really nobody stepped up to do anything to stop it. And old teams are connected defensively. They don't let teams get on runs because they take good shots. And North Carolina doesn't do that right now. They're not passing the ball well. They're not sharing the basketball and moving the ball well so far this year. And that's been, been a consistent theme all year. And Hubert Davis has been really positive. He knows that the time is now. You know, you, last week we've seen Armando Baycott come out and say like he's nervous about not making the NCAA tournament. Like we're on the verge of a historic collapse of a number one team not making the NCAA tournament. And North Carolina has to win right now. Like they have to get red hot right now. And what we've seen as of late is th this team isn't capable of putting together stretches of consistent play. They, they just aren't. So just banking on what they did last March doesn't help them this year. Even though a lot of the same faces are the same, I think it's pretty clear that this North Carolina team isn't connected right now. And can they do it? Maybe but it, it feels a little bit easier said than done. Another inconsistent team, Wisconsin, is 3-3 three and three in its last six games, which includes most recently a home loss to Rutgers. Now, they do have some strong wins on the resume. I just don't know if there's enough of them. So what's your case for the Badgers being left in or being left out? Yeah, right now they're not playing like an NCAA tournament team so far this year. But overall, their resume, like you said, puts them in that mix. It's really hard to find better wins than on the road against uh, a team like Marquette that might be a three seed and win the Big East. That's a great win for Wisconsin. They were inches away from beating Kansas, too. If they win that game, I don't think we're necessarily having that conversation right now. So, again, I look at this upcoming little stretch here for Wisconsin is going to be huge. I think closing the rest of their season, they have to win at least three games down the stretch. They can't afford to lose to Minnesota. That's going to be a huge game for them. They just can't afford to lose it. But they have some three tough games here. Iowa, at Michigan, and then Purdue at home. You find a way to win a couple of those games, you're starting to feel a little bit better, especially if they can go into the Big Ten tournament and make a little bit of a run. But at, at the end of the day, Greg Gard, like this Wisconsin team, isn't the most talented roster top to bottom. You look at the guys coming off their bench, it's, it's not a, a bench that really scares you right now. They need their stars to step up. Chucky Hepburn has to be better. Tyler Wall has to be better. Connor Seijan has to be a little bit more consistent, which is tough for a freshman who wasn't really supposed to be their go-to shot maker so far this year, but he's had to step into that role. So the Badgers were playing like at an elite level in November. We've seen them hang with some of the best teams in college basketball, but for the past couple months, they've really staggered and they're not looking like that tournament team right now. And we'll see if they can kind of get back on track here down the stretch. And it, again, like North Carolina, it's win or go home for Wisconsin right now. And, and this is a team that, you know, lives on making the NCAA tournament. They live on, on exceeding expectations, but this is a roster that's kind of lived up to like been on, on par with what everything else that they've done so far this year. Like it's a roster on paper, isn't really a super talented roster and they're not playing like it right now. Well, last time out against Iowa, beat them by three. So maybe another close one this week. All right. Well, thank you, Isaac. And as we get closer to the tournament, remember to like this video and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel for more college basketball news and analysis. <laughs>